brain-derived nootropic factor. Sounds like something super complicated and sciencey to the point where you probably want to turn off this video. But I'm gonna bring it back to earth and make it simple. So first off, brain-derived nootropic factor is literally like our brain's fertilizer. It's a specific gene that relates with a specific protein that grows new neurons and grows new synapses within our brain. So it's a very important thing and it's just recently been discovered. But the reality is BDNF is sort of the epicenter for growth and development within the adult brain and a child brain. I'm Thomas DeLauer with Keto Mojo and we're gonna break down how the ketogenic diet actually has an effect on this brain fertilizer. You see, the role of BDNF isn't just to grow new neurons or just to grow new synapses. It also has a role when it comes down to just protecting our existing synapses and protecting our existing neurons. So it's a protective and growth mechanism. The reality is we need it for survival and it's usually an adaptation to some form of stress. So the reality is whenever we're fasting or whenever we're exercising or anything like that where we're putting our body or our brains under significant stress, BDNF upregulates as a result. So basically, because our brains get exposed to stress, the body senses that and says, well, we need more BDNF to allow this brain to be able to adapt to this. So it's literally a growth factor because of that. But when you start looking at the science, you realize that fasting causes the same effect. When the body and the brain are under stress because there's no food coming in, suddenly BDNF goes up. So we start wondering, well, is it simply because we're starving? Is it simply because we're under stress that BDNF goes up? Or is there actually a physiological sort of chemical relationship with the ketones that are produced when we're fasting? So studies actually started looking at the result of specific neurons from the hippocampus portion of the brain and how they relate to the ketones specifically. And what was really interesting was that when these cells or these neurons were exposed to ketones, they ended up having the upregulation of BDNF. So we could potentially have a twofold situation going on where we have the stress from fasting or the stress from ketosis or the stress from working out causing an influx of BDNF, but we also have the increase of ketones actually having an effect too. What's possibly going on, and this is somewhat of just a hypothesis, is that the neurons are starting to get adapted to using the ketones. So in the beginning phase, when the brain is recognizing glucose at first and has to suddenly start seeing ketones coming in, it gets a little bit confused, a little bit stressed out. So it forms some resistance. So what have been found in the studies in the first six hours of these neurons being exposed to ketones, there's an upregulation of reactive oxygen species or specific oxidative stressors. So it's probably a result of these neurons just getting adapted to using ketones. But then after six hours, it found that reactive oxygen species levels went down but mitochondrial respiration increased. So what that means is that the mitochondria, the cell, the neurons, they all got more efficient after being exposed to the stress from the influx of ketones in the beginning. So what I mean by this is exposing the brain to ketones through the ketogenic diet or through periods of fasting actually triggers an initial influx of stress on the brain that forces the brain to adapt and get larger and smarter and more developed. So we can actually literally say that ketones in the blood and ketones in the body can help us produce more BDNF. Okay, so if we have more mitochondrial respiration, the brain can fire faster. It can recognize things faster. You can memorize things faster. And all in all, it's just a great scenario to be in. So you wanna make sure that you're always having your ketones in the prime position. You wanna make sure that you're getting them elevated up over at least 1.5 millimoles to have this effect. And this is gonna allow your brain to constantly be exposed to just enough ketones to trigger just enough of the chain reaction with reactive oxygen species followed by the adaptation. So if you wanna test your ketones and make sure that you're right in the optimal state, you're gonna to wanna to use the gold standard when it comes to meters, and that's the Keto Mojo meter. So this way you can check not only your glucose levels, but your ketone levels too, and see that you are right where you need to be to get those optimal levels of BDNF. I'm Thomas DeLauer with Keto Mojo, and I'll see you in the next video.